Hi everyone, in today's video, I take up a very important topic that is equation of time and I will discuss the theory of equation of time and also a short numerical to show you the application of the theory for a numerical or calculation based questions. This video was requested by a number of viewers and subscribers. So here goes the explanation. So let me first start with the theory of equation of time. Now to explain the theory of equation of time, let me put you as an observer in the celestial sphere because equation time or equation of time is a concept based on the celestial navigation system, not on the terrestrial navigation system. So here are you the observer, right? And you observe that on your celestial meridian, the sun comes exactly on your meridian at 1200 hours, right? And this is day one. Now, if you don't change your position and you stand at the same position on day two and you observe that the sun again is on your celestial meridian at 1200 hours, you can use this as a basis for timekeeping. So you would say that one day equals 24 hours because you observe the sun every day or between two days exactly on your meridian at 1200 hours. Now this is also the basis of timekeeping. Alright, so although it is the earth that rotates on its axis, we say that the sun takes 24 hours every day because on the earth as observers we are stationary, we don't assume that it is the earth that's moving, we say that it is the sun that is moving with respect to the earth. So we say that one day consists of 24 hours based on the movement of the sun. Now that is not true to an extent. We have something called the mean sun and we have something called the true sun. Right? Now what is the true sun? The true sun is what we see in the sky. That is the real sun that we see. Now that doesn't take 24 hours every day. So when I say 24 hours, I actually mean, uh, well, with respect to the earth's movement, we, we say that it is the sun that takes 24 hours to go around the earth, but it is actually the earth that is going around on its own axis. And we say it takes 24 hours, but no, it doesn't. So what we observe in the sky as a true sun, it takes less than 24 hours. Sometimes it may take 24 hours, but sometimes it takes 23 hours, 58 minutes, 56 seconds, or 59 minutes, uh, 57 seconds, something like that. The time keeps varying. It keeps varying. It's not constant. So we cannot use true sun as a means of timekeeping. That is why the astronomers invented a fictional sun called the mean sun. The mean sun takes 24 hours exactly to be observed every day at the same position. Because this is mean sun. This is a fictional sun. It doesn't exist. It's not real. Now this can be used as a, a tool for timekeeping because we can assume that every day the sun will take 24 hours to rise uh, and if we are observing it on the same meridian. Right? So this is the one the mean sun is also the one that we use for nautical almanac and all the time we get from nautical almanac because we uh, cannot use a sun that takes uh, varying time. Every day it takes different time for our calculations because it would be difficult to, for them to uh, calculate and put the values in the almanac. So the mean sun takes exactly 24 hours because it's fictional sun and the true sun varies in time. And this is the difference which is called equation of time. So basically, the difference between mean time based on mean sun and the time based on true sun is not called true time, but it's called the apparent time. It's called the apparent time. The difference between mean time and apparent time is called the equation of time. This is the theory behind it. All right. So uh, everywhere the Wherever you read about equation of time, you will see that it is expressed as the difference between mean time minus the apparent time, the difference between it. All right, one could be greater, the other one could be lesser. So we always say difference. We don't say minus, we would say the difference between each. Now, if mean time is greater than the apparent time, we say 
that the equation of time equation of time is positive all right similarly if mean time is lesser than the apparent time and i'll show you later on in the calculations what i mean then we say that the equation of time is negative all right so equation of time is expressed as a difference of mean time and apparent time depending upon which one is has a larger value but it is an interval of time all right so when i'll show you in the drawings in terms of arcs so we we you, as you know that uh, on the earth uh, we measure time from the with respect to the greenwich meridian and this side is east longitude right and this side is west longitude and we measure it with respect to how far we are from the greenwich meridian right so as we go east we add hours plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 of course the first 7 and 1/2 degrees of longitude it's zone 0 where it's the same time as greenwich time but then as we go west we subtract hours so that is the basis of time keeping on the earth rather terrestrial navigation system right but in celestial navigation system we measure it with respect to the arc but we measure it with respect to the greenwich meridian again so we have the greenwich meridian this is the celestial greenwich meridian and then we have the inferior meridian of the uh, greenwich as well we can call it g dash and we measure the time with respect to the angle that it makes with the celestial greenwich meridian so this here if this is the true sun we call it the true sun or it could be sometimes with respect to what we call as the mean sun all right we can call it ms if you want and we can call it ts if you want true sun and mean sun so that is how it is expressed in terms of arc in terms of celestial navigation all right so of course uh, since it is a westward measurement from the greenwich you also have concepts of gh a m s which is greenwich apparent mean time or gh a true sun sorry greenwich r angle mean sun and greenwich r angle true sun or you may have lha mean sun minus lha true sun or you might have sha mean sun with respect to sha true sun all right so the mean sun moves at a uniform rate along the equinoctial and takes 24 hours while the true sun moves at a varying rate along the ecliptic but both the sun complete an apparent revolution in exactly the same period which is 365 days which is equal to one year if we think about it with respect to the year thing but when we think about it from a 24 hours perspective it takes different time so in the books it says that the equation of time which is the difference between the mean sun and the true sun this time cannot exceed more than 16 minutes and 22 seconds cannot exceed more than that it cannot the difference cannot be more than that in terms of time or in terms of angle 4 degrees and 5.5 minutes cannot exceed it either all right so whenever you are calculating the equation of time you have to remember the difference cannot be more than 16 minutes 22 seconds or 4 degrees 5.5 minutes all right now before i end this video let me show you the application of this theory in a question and then in my separate videos i'll discuss more questions i'll take up solved questions unsolved questions and show you what how it all comes together all right so let's take an example here let's take an example of a question and you may have to do this on the ships as well sometimes so you have to find the equation of time at 1830 hours and this is of course a gmt on 13th of october 1976 now you may not have the almanac for 1976 it doesn't matter you just have to focus here on the solution you have to focus on how we find the equation of time you don't have to worry about anything else all right so you can have the same almanac and uh, or a different almanac but you understand the um, process behind it all right so let's get started with the solution what is the solution how do we find equation of time so we go into the almanac first so here i go into the almanac 
I will zoom it here. If you can see, I have zoomed it here. And you can see how uh, the equation of time of the sun is shown and so is the meridian passage. All right, so we have for 12th October, 13th October and 14th October, of course, you have for moon, but I am focusing more on the sun. Right now, I want to see if I can basically here you go. All right, the problem is I cannot uh, zoom and uh, use my pen. That is my problem or can I? Yes, I can actually. Yeah. All right. So you can see here, this is the equation of time and this is the meridian passage for sun. Right. So I need it for 13th of October. So you can see the equation of time is mentioned for 00, zero hours as well as 1200 hours. All right. Now we have been asked to find the time uh, for 1830 hours GMT. Now this is all is GMT, of course. So we have to find it for 1830 hours on 13th of October. So that would lie between 13th 1200 hours. So between this time here and between 14th 00 hours, right? So 13th 1830 will rise will lie between the day 13th 1200 hours. And the day 14th midnight so you have to make a note of these two times all right now how do we know the equation of time here is negative or positive so we have to compare it with the time that is given for our meridian passage all right and i'll show you what i mean here i'll go back and show you what i mean so here make a note of the meridian passage time as 11 46 and then the meridian passage time again is 11.46. Alright, now this uh, meridian passage time is based on which sun? It is based on the mean sun. It is based on mean sun. So these values are based on the mean sun. So you can see that when it is 12 o'clock meridian passage, that is 12 o'clock based on the true sun, the meridian passage time based on the mean sun is 11.46. So that means that the mean time is less than the true sun time or the apparent time and therefore here the equation of time is going to be negative in both the cases so once you have made a note of these times let me go back and show you in the solution how to do this question otherwise we are going to lose track of what we were doing so here i told you that uh, let's discuss how equation of time is negative so we saw that the meridian passage time the meridian passage time was written as 1146 and 1146 now this is based on mean sun the fictional sun based on which the almanac is calculated now what is meridian passage time meridian passage time is noon time or when we say the sun is exactly on our meridian at its highest peak and based on true sun based on the true sun it is actually 12 o'clock 1200 hours in each case right now here you can see that the true sun time so the mean sun time is less than the true sun time and i've showed you above i've written here above where true sun time so here you can see that when the mean sun time is less than the true sun time the equation of time is going to be negative right so therefore here the equation of time is going to be negative because the mean sun time is 1146 and the true sun time is 1200 hours so equation of time is going to be negative in both the cases but we have to find the equation of time for 13th october 1976 1830 hours that's our target so that's why we wrote down the equation of time for 13th october 1200 hours to 14th october midnight because uh, between 1200 hours and midnight is 1830 hours it lies somewhere between here so we write down the e equation of time for 1200 hours as 1348 from the almanac and for 14th is 1355 right these are of course hours hours right so we have to do some interpolation so for 1200 hours and this is 13th it's 1348 for 14th midnight hours is 1355 so that would mean for 12 hours the difference is 7 minutes 
but I need it for 1830 hours. 1830 lies somewhere between here and what's the difference from 1200 hours? It's six and a half hours. So for six and a half hours, I have to find out what is the difference. So what is the six and a half hours? It's 1830 minus 12. The simple interpolation, I'm sure you know how to do it. So we just subtract, uh, we just cross multiply it here. So we have 6.5 multiplied by 7 divided by 12. Now I have my calculator right in front of me. So I have 6.5 multiplied by 7 divided by 12, which will give me 3.8 minutes. So I say 3.8 minutes, which I will add here to the equation of time because I can see that the equation of time is increasing as I'm going from 12 to midnight. So the equation of time for 13th, 1830 hours, will be 1348 plus 3.8 or let's assume let's round it off to four minutes will be about 1352 hours all right so i have i've rounded it off to four minutes because we can't have 3.8 minutes for any kind of practical time keeping so this is the equation of time on a desired date at a desired time so this is how you find it but this is the most simple explanation or application of the theory I am going to take up more examples and let me know whether you want to see these examples or not. I am going to take more examples, more complicated examples of numerical. I would have liked to take it today as well in this video, but then it would have made the video very long and I know it's hard for you to uh, manage your concentration for so long. So I'm going to do that uh, and uh, let me know what you thought about this video, whether it helped you to understand the concept of equation of time or whether something is still not clear. Your feedback comments helps me to improve my videos. I make these videos for your learning, for your benefit. So if it's not benefiting you, you have to let me know. Thanks guys and all the best with your studies. See you soon with my next